Yeah, g'day, and welcome back to this, my Schaublin 125 CNC lathe retrofit program. As I explained in my last video, because of my ignorance of good standard wiring practices, I've created for myself an interference problem. So last week I reached out to the community asking for some advice of how to actually troubleshoot this problem. I really appreciate all the comments, all the inputs. Even if there was some quite heated debate in there, I really appreciate everybody's generous assistance. The offered advice I received can be grouped into three areas. The first one is troubleshooting steps to isolate which specific component is causing the voltage spike and causing the noise. The second area would be how to suppress that voltage spike and prevent the crosstalk from there onto the limit switch circuit with its hull sensors. The third area was what were some things you could do to just accept that voltage spike but suppress the effect on the system. A special shout out to the Linux CNC forum member Spumco who summarized most of the advice given in the comments section into one list of do this, 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 this and this, which really helps me. Thanks a lot. So the first question is, is it only these two contactors for the variator which can cause a problem? This is the main on off relay when I first turn on the machine. It doesn't really matter if it gives a voltage spike because nothing else is happening at that time, either at startup or shutdown. This contactor is only to power the, the main spindle motor, but it powers only indirectly because it's powering this VFD and the VFD then does all of the motor turning on and off and speed changes, etc. That's well shielded. It's also got filters before and after. And yeah, I've had no issues so far with that system. What could potentially be a problem, this relay is currently unused. But it's there to control the coolant pump, just needs wiring up. If somebody didn't see last week's video, why not? Go and watch it now. Just to restate the problem, if I start the spindle, if I then command a speed chain, this relay is going to close for one second. And then you can see when the relay opened again, some sort of voltage spike has triggered the limit switch on the x-axis. So I've got an electromagnetic interference problem. That's what I'm here to fix. The first step should be to disconnect the coil of the contactors and see whether I still get that interference occurring. These are just 24 volt DC lines. I'll just leave them hanging there. Okay, sure enough, when I release the contactor, it has e-stopped the machine. It means it's not back at EMF from the coils breaking, that's causing our problem. Those are fine. So next troubleshooting step, reconnect the coils and disconnect the three phase power. Let me just shut this all down. Unplug it from the wall. I'm just storing these live wires in these Wago connectors just to make sure they don't touch anything or uh, we'll cause any problems. Right, test that. Yeah, so running the coil doesn't e-stop the machine. Let's try the other coil. Yeah, also doesn't e-stop the machine. Okay, next troubleshooting step. Since I've got a spare contactor, this is the one for the coolant pump, which I haven't hooked up yet. We'll switch the three-phase power over onto this and just manually activate it and see whether I get the same interference on a different contactor. That may be an indication of like worn out contacts arcing within one of these two contactors. I mean, it's kind of unlikely seeing as both of them are behaving ex almost exactly the same, but let's do the test. Home the machine. Now we can turn on the spindle. Okay, same result, the machine e-stopped. If it's not the coils, and it's not the contactors, then it's probably the wiring. Basically everything from here backwards is, at least for those two systems, original Schaublin. This here, 
is the control cable with all the hall sensors in it. Each of this is a high quality oil flex cable. Let me just focus that. See here's an example. This is original Shoblin, I haven't even touched that. On the end of the shielding, they've crimped some sort of ferrule, put a pigtail lead onto it, and that lead's going off to earth, and then off to a single star ground with everything else. Given the quality of all of Shoblin's work, I'm gonna start with an assumption here. My wiring's not as good as theirs. Let's just quickly trace through my wiring and see if there's a spot where those low voltage signals are running in parallel with the variator three phase signals. The original hull sensor wiring from Shoblin connects here onto terminals 22 and 23. From there, they go up. And what have I done with them? Okay, they're going, they go up here and along this raceway in that direction and up to these two pins of the Mesa card, these input pins. So power to my three phase comes up through these uh, timer switches, fuses or whatever they are, to the top here. So we come out of these two relays, these six wires at the back, and they go across this way, down and back, to connect into 15, 16 and 17. From there they then connect into the original motor wires and head off down a shielded cable. So it looks like the only spot on the in, in the wiring where they come together is just in this section here. Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't really gain me anything to take them out this side and down here because then they would run parallel for a much longer distance. That's probably about the shortest distance of running parallel I can do. With the induced field strength decreasing at the square law of distance, as he said, you don't need much distance in the cable run, and maybe we can fix that crosstalk. So let's get in there and try that. Just put a couple of jumper wires in and in their place. So I can separate these wires way away from the three phase. I'll just use a bit of tape to hold them right out in the free air. Mm -hmm. Well, it was somewhat better. It worked in one direction, but still picked up interference in the other. Try that again. Well, that alone doesn't change much. There was a comment by Stevegcha that Siemens actually makes a suppression module that would work. So I looked that up. Okay, that's kind of cool. That just looks like a plug-in module, but where does this plug in? I've got the auxiliary contacts on the outside portion, so it doesn't appear that like I could plug it into that. Any ideas? Those two end stop health sensor wires come into this board here on the first two pins. So I tried adding some flying leads on them and connecting up my toy oscilloscope and of course to ground. But I don't know whether the oscilloscope's lacking bandwidth and sample rate or I'm lacking knowledge and talent of how to use it. Although I did watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos on how to, how to set it up. I wasn't able to get a picture of that voltage spike. It was at uh, 10 microseconds on a one voltage scale with a trigger set for anything above two volts, but couldn't see anything. I think my battery's gone flat. Now, another thing I was told to try was to add a ferret, but I went through my little box of tricks here, but I thought I sighted a couple of rabbits and a hamster, but not a single ferret. <sighs> Of course, now we're getting far enough down into the weeds with this whole thing that this first sentence becomes super tempting. What about just adding some debounce? Linux CNC's got a component for that, so let's add it and see what happens. So I'm here in the main HAL file for the machine, and what I've done is just add this debounce module with three filters, added it to the servo thread, and I'll try out with a, with a debounce of five microseconds. This is what I originally had, where that's that input coming in from the hull sensor. It's being used as a home switch and as the positive X limit. And 
the next one is being used as the negative limit. So the signal comes in as before, but instead of getting connected straight into the home and limit switch inputs, go through that five microsecond to bouncing first. Okay, the end stops still work normally and other home as home switches. Okay, that's the maximum. Let's go back down. So what have I learned from all this? Well, one, I suck at oscilloscopy, and two, I don't have enough ferrets in my spare parts box. Three, Siemens contactors are like electrical Lego, but I don't actually know how to add the snubber modules to them. But adding electronic demounts has given me enough of a solution that I can move on with more important aspects of this lathe restoration. So I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody who made a comment. All you electrical guys were generously sharing all of your experience. I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.